Welcome. Thanks for joining me. This class is going to focus on a calming aspect. We're going to do some restorative poses and they're specifically geared to down regulating. They're going to take the focus off those adrenal glands and the adrenal glands are little glands that sit on top of your kidneys and they pump out those fight or flight hormones, right? That little stress hormone, adrenaline, cortisol, those get amped up when your adre adrenals are active for a long period of time through times of anxiety, stress, fear, uncertainty. And so it's really good for you to practice a down regulating practice at least once a week. You know, I know for me, I'm a type A, I like to do those hardcore um, vinyasa flow classes, I love them. Um, but I find that this really helps me because I get really fatigued when you think about um, things that you're doing in your daily life and you get stressed or times of uncertainty, times of anxiety. And these four poses that we're gonna go through today are really gonna help. You're gonna need lots of props. So I'm gonna kind of show you what you need. And then from there, you can pause this video, go gather your supplies and then come back and press play again. Make sure when you're setting yourself up, you either have a chair handy or the wall. So we are going to do legs up the wall. I've gone and I've commandeered a couple of cushions from my couch. I have my yoga blocks. I have my strap. If you don't have a strap, you can grab a belt. You can grab a piece of fabric, even a towel, something that you're going to be able to use um, when you ha we have legs up the wall. I've also gotten a couple towels from my closet, so you can use those as well. And if you don't have an eye pillow, I have an eye pillow, but if you don't have an eye pillow, you can always take a small hand towel and fold it a couple times. And sometimes I really like this, especially in Shavasana, as it goes over my eyes. It also covers my ears and really takes me inside. So I can focus on just my breath and calming down and not really letting any external sounds bother me as well as with my eyes closed any sites. So I'm going to allow you to gather those things and then we are going to get started. Our first pose is going to be child's pose with a little bit of support. Before we get there, I'm going to take my two towels and I'm going to create a little roll with them so that I can use that for later. So I'm going to take those two towels, I'm going to spread them out, and I'm going to start from one end and I'm just going to roll it to the other end. And then I'm just going to ha put this off to the side. We're going to use this for our second pose. We don't need it for the first one. But I'm just going to have that ready and off to the side for the second round. Um, I'm going to take this towel, place it off to the side for my second round as well. And then for our first pose of child's pose supported, this is going to help us ground ourselves into the present moment. You're going to take, I like to take my blanket and place it down. That's where my knees and my shins are going to go. And then I'm going to take my two big cushions and place those down so they kind of stack. So I'm going to have one cushion down and then place the other cushion on top. And then I might even take a block um, or a, another pillow or something to place it on top. So I like to have my head straight down on the on the bolster rather than turning my head to one side I feel that gives me a little bit of tension in one side if you choose to go one side I will tell you when halfway is and then you can switch your side over to the other side so you have those as an option for you as well so what you're going to do is um, you're I'm going to let you settle in I'm going to get you in there let you settle in when you hear a little bell I'll bring you out um, the idea is to just feel fully supported if it hurts to sit on your hips or your knees you can take another blanket underneath, you can take a pillow, you can take your blocks, slide them under just to give yourself a little bit more support. You can even lay all the way over the bolster and allow yourself to be supported, maybe even bring the bolster up even higher so there's no pressure on the knees so that you really feel supported and you can really let yourself drop down into the ground. So go ahead and set yourself up here. Come to your knees finding a wide leg child's pose, draw those bolsters all the way up and in between the legs, draw them right up to your belly, and then your arms can lengthen out. You can place your arms on either side of you on blocks. You can take your arms overheads and then interlink them or wrap them around the bolster. Whatever's going to feel best for you and most supported. So settle yourself in. Find what works for you. 
and drop in. Take a nice deep inhale. And sigh it out. And just notice your breath here. We're going to be in each of these poses for about five minutes or so. If you need to adjust to do so mindfully and with your breath, it should feel supportive. If the pose isn't becoming supportive, adjust it so that it can. If there gets to be a point where maybe you're just done with this pose, allow yourself to come up and just sit and observe what's happened in that pose. But for now, just allow yourself to settle in, drop in, and observe what's happening in your body. Maybe start to lengthen and deepen your breaths. Inhaling and exhaling a little bit deeper on each side. The forward fold of Balasana or child's pose allows you to connect with your breath, allows you to draw inward, it allows you to connect with your mind. Having your forehead rest down on something, I find at least for me, helps me feel more grounded and centered. It allows my thoughts to stay here with me in this space. If you have your head turned to one side, go ahead and turn it to the opposite side. And then settle back in. Notice if you can drop in a little bit deeper with your breath. Maybe inhale to a count of three and exhale to a count of three. Allowing for that slight rounding in the upper back as you fold forward. Give space for the kidneys where the adrenals sit on top of. Allowing them to realize that it's okay to just slow down, stop production. Another great indicator of that is your breath. The deeper you can breathe, the slower the heart beats, and the slower that your body will go. It'll start to downregulate. We'll start to become more calm, relaxed. I'll leave you here for about another minute of peace and listening to your own breath. Taking a nice deep inhale, side out the mouth. Mindfully start to press yourself up to seated. As you come up to seated, allow yourself to move the props out of the way. Maybe you take those big bolsters, slide them out of the way, and then come to cross leg. Just sitting for a moment, closing the eyes, pausing here. Acknowledging how that pose felt in the body. And then allow your eyes to blink open. 
So for this next one, we're going to do uh, Supta Baddha Konasana, so recline supported cobbler's pose. So from here, you're going to take those bolsters again. This time you're going to, instead of stacking them on top, you're going to have one at an angle. And I like to have my blanket at the bottom here, and I like to kind of roll it up that bolster so that I'm able to have a little bit of more support for my low back. So you want to have a little support. If you even need, take another a, a pillow and place it there. You have that as an option. I'm going to use my blocks on either side of me for my arms because I find that is supportive to me. I'm going to take my extra little blanket and place it up on top. I'm going to have my eye pillow nearby. To have that for myself and then from there I'm going to take that little rolled towel and I'm going to use that so I'm going to show you what that's going to look like so if you come into Baddha Konasana right and it's too much for your hips or your knees maybe that bothers your hips you have two options you can bring your knees together knees knocking and feet are going to be wide so you have that as an option or you can have your feet straight up sometimes when your feet are straight up it tent your knees, if you get too relaxed, they might drop out to the side. That's when that having that strap would be a great thing to have. And then you would take that strap and you would place it around the tops of your knees and draw that tight so that your feet can stay hip distance apart and you don't have to worry about your knees dropping out to the sides as you relax. So if Baddha Konasana is not for you, there's a couple options. Otherwise, you're going to take that rolled up towel, that long rolled up towel that you have, and you're going to take your feet, bring the soles of your feet together. You're going to wrap that towel around the front, come behind your ankles, and then you have like this little circle that's around your ankles. Then you're going to take those two little ends, tuck them under where your feet are. So tuck it under that towel and have them pointing out the same direction as your toes. Nestle that in there, get it nice and tight. Sometimes it'll take a little working. And you're gonna wiggle that in. And then that gives you a little bit more support for your ankles. Your knees are a little bit more supported. That might be enough support for you to sit. So then you're gonna come, bring yourself up here next to the bolster and start to recline. And just see, is that enough support for my legs? Is that gonna help me? If you need a little bit more support, what I like to do is take a couple other pillows Fold them in half if you can, slide them right up next under the hips, and then let the hips drop down under there. So I'm going to do that on both sides with those, and then let them drop. And they kind of settle in here. Notice if you need a little bit more support behind. You might need another pillow back here. If your chin is lifted up too much, that's another stimulating pose. You want to, again, down-regulate. You want to give yourself a little bit more relaxing time. So that's where I have that extra little blanket under my neck. I'm going to kind of curl that under the base of my head so that my chin can kind of drop a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of settle in, notice how things are feeling. Make any little adjustments you need. And then maybe covering those eyes so you have the option with your eye pillow. And there's another option where coming with that towel around your ears is nice and comforting. So getting in settled, and then I'll start with a couple deep breaths. Having those arms supported with something really helps the shoulders relax, helps you feel completely supported here so that you're able to just focus on your breath. So wherever you are in your breathing cycle, exhale fully. Take a slow inhale. Hold the breath at the top. Exhale through the nose. Hold the breath at the bottom. Again, inhale. Hold. Exhale through the nose. Hold. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. 
hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale, fully. Sigh it out. Take a couple moments here. Allow that breathing to settle in. If you feel like you could use a few more rounds, do maybe three, five, or ten more rounds. Just focusing on letting yourself surrender here. Opening the heart, letting yourself be supported. Staying with your breath and your body on your mat. about 45 more seconds here. If at any time this becomes too much, you can always come up out of it, sitting, allowing the sensations to settle in. Take a nice deep inhale. And sigh it out the mouth. Slowly allow the eyes to blink open. Helping those knees back up to center. Pause there for a moment. Moving any props out of the way that you need. And from here, we're going to slowly make our way up. Grabbing behind those shins, draw your chin toward your chest, roll yourself up, grabbing onto those thighs, and lifting yourself. Pausing there. Sitting up tall. Taking a moment, check in. Take a deep inhale. And sigh out. Let your eyes blink open. Allow yourself to come back to the room. So from here, you're now going to take yourself, move that stuff out of the way from the wall. So you're going to move your stuff to the wall. Um, moving some things out of the way, you might want to have a pillow, your strap for sure, and a block to as you come toward the wall. I'm going to take these bigger bolsters and just move them out of the way. I won't need them. So I'm going to slide those up out of the way. And then I'm going to take my blanket and I'm going to place that blanket at the wall. I'm going to allow that to support me. And I might even have one of my pillows nearby so I can slide that under my hips once I get up the wall. So something you can do, something that feels pretty good in the body, is having yourself um, take a block and you're going to place it between your shins. You can have a pillow if you'd like as well if you don't have a block. 
but taking that and placing it between the shins the long way. It just kind of keeps your feet and your legs hip distance apart while they're up overhead. And then you're going to take your strap, and as you take that strap, you're going to place it around your shins and around that block, and then just tighten it to where it's secure but not too tight. And then have an extra blanket or bolster or something that you're then going to take that and you're going to place it over your feet once your feet get up the wall. So have a little extra something there. Just that little extra weight on the feet feels good on the hips, which then in turn helps you calm down and de-stress a little bit more. So get yourself all set. Make sure your cat's out of the way. <laughs> He's loving this. And you're going to come sit right next to the wall with one shoulder. And then you're going to slowly lay down, take those legs up the wall, and from here you're going to pause, and then adjust the strap, adjust the block as you need. Take that extra little blanket, bend your knees, and then just kind of flip that blanket over the feet so that they're covered. It's going to keep them a little um, warmer as well. And then just kind of settle in here. Notice what you might need. I'm going to take one of my pillows and I'm going to slide it under my hips. I'm going to press into the wall, lift my hips, slide that pillow right underneath. I'm just going to settle in and just notice what else I might need. Maybe I need a little something under my head. I'm going to take a pillow, place that under my head, and then finally covering my eyes. So settling in here, getting comfortable, and then your arms can either reach toward the wall. If your hands tend to touch the wall, you can take your arms wider. I like to take my arms like cactus and turn my palms up. I like to tuck my shoulder blades onto my back. And then from here, you're just going to settle in, take a nice deep inhale. And then side out the mouth. And again, you can return to that breathing that you did before, that inhaling and exhaling to a four count. You can allow yourself to just breathe naturally. And just try if you can keep your sensations on your body. Notice how it feels to have those legs up the wall. Notice how it feels to have your hips supported, your back on the ground. And can you relax those legs any little bit? If you're finding the hamstrings come into play, just bend your knees slightly to take the hamstrings out of it. And that's another good reason to have something over your feet, especially near the heels, so that as your heels press into the wall, it's not going to make your heels hurt or feel uncomfortable. And then just try to go inward. Listen to your breath. Notice the sensations in the body. Just allowing yourself to be present. At any time your body feels like it's complete with this pose, it's done being here, you can always come out of it slowly and mindfully and then just return to seated or maybe even just laying on your back with your legs and your feet on the floor.
Take a nice deep inhale. And sigh out the mouth. Allow the eyes to blink open. And allow your knees to bend. <laughs> if you have a cat on your chest, take it off. Taking that towel around off your feet first. Slide the strap off. Remove the strap. Remove the block. Allow yourself to roll over to your side using your arm as a pillow. Pause there for a moment. And then when you're ready, mindfully press yourself up. Coming back up to seated. Once you've found that seat, pause there for a moment. Let the eyes close once again. Check in with sensations. And take a big inhale. And sigh it out. Allow the eyes to blink open. And then from here, we're going to settle into Shavasana, our final resting position. So from here, I'm going to take those towels that I had folded up. I'm going to use those a little bit differently so they're stacked. I'm going to unroll that bolster. I'm going to take that, fold it in half, and then I'm going to start to roll it up. I'm going to roll it up into a nice little roll <laughs> that Leroy doesn't want me to have. I'm going to set up him a little space here right next to me because he likes to do Shavasana. So I'm going to take that. That's going to go under my knees. Before I get to that part, I'm going to take my blanket, and I like to lay it down on my mat. Get these out of the way. I take my blanket, and I'm going to take that blanket and have it as long as my mat, and maybe the width of my mat, so at least my torso from my shoulders all the way down, probably to my mid-thighs, is going to be supported by that blanket. I'm going to have that little extra blanket or towel. I'm going to have that up near my head so that I can maybe put some support under my cervical spine. So basically you want to think of setting up your Shavasana here as if the floor is coming up to rise and meet any of those areas that are lifted off the floor as you naturally lay in Shavasana. So thinking of your cervical spine, your low back, your knees, maybe even your ankles if that feels good too. So from there, you're going to lay down, all the way down, having any support you need. This is where having that um, towel over your eyes is going to feel really good. And then from here, placing that bolster just behind, just above your knees. As you notice, Leroy is already in Shavasana. He's already tucked under. He's super happy. And then from there, I'm going to just lengthen my low back down. I might even take that blanket underneath and give it a little support. Maybe I put my hand towel under there. I'm going to take that extra towel blanket, place it under my cervical spine to feel a little bit more support there so that I can open up. I'm going to open up a little bit wider, draw those shoulder blades onto the back, and allow my arms and legs to lengthen. And just get out any little adjustments, any wiggles that you need to happen so you can rest comfortably, feeling you're most supported here in this position. And wherever you are in your breathing cycle, exhale fully. Take a slow inhale through the nose. Fill the belly. Fill the ribs. Fill the chest, hold on to that breath for a moment. And then open the mouth and sigh it out. Again, let that belly expand. Breathe deep into the belly. Breathe out into the ribs. And then breathe all the way up into the chest. Hold on to that breath for a moment. And then sigh it out. One final time. Breathe down into the belly. Let the belly expand. Let the ribs expand in all directions. 
Let the chest rise. Hold on to that breath. And let it go. As you let go, let yourself surrender here into stillness, settling in, allowing yourself to completely relax mentally, physically. Do a little scan of the body, acknowledging those areas that were tight or tense at the beginning of practice. And then see if now here things are a little bit more loose a little less stressed, a little less tense. And then can you let go even more? If things start to distract you in the mind, if you start to feel yourself getting pulled away, acknowledge the thought, send it away, as if it's a cloud on a breezy day. Trying to allow yourself to stay here in this moment with your body, with your breath. Surrendering for a few more moments in silence. If you have a few more moments to stay here, please do. Don't feel like you have to rush getting up if this feels good. Stay here as long as you need. Otherwise, if you're ready to be done, if you're ready to move on, allow your next breath to come in a little deeper. On your next breath, bring some movement into the fingers and toes, and maybe even the wrists and the ankles. On your next breath, reach your arms back behind your head, slide your feet together, give yourself a long stretch. And then slowly bend your knees. Taking those feet as wide as your mat apart, we do one windshield wiper to each side. Take an inhale of the knees up. And exhale, drop your knees to the left. Inhale to center. And exhale to the right. Inhale back to center. As you exhale, hug those knees into the chest, give them a squeeze. And then when you're ready, using your arm as a pillow, roll over to your favorite side. 
Pause there, take a moment. Keeping the eyes closed if you can, take that top hand, roll over onto that top hand, extend the top leg, pressing yourself up sideways. And then come up to seated, allowing yourself to settle in, hands resting at the heart center. Allowing yourself to come into the room, onto your mat, and into your body. Connecting with yourself and thanking yourself for making it to your mat. Allowing this practice to help you de-stress from your life. Allow that parasympathetic nervous system to kick in. Allow that sympathetic nervous system of that stress, the adrenaline, the cortisol, to just take a break. Let those adrenals shut off for a while. Returning to this practice whenever you need it. Maybe even taking just one or two of these poses each day. Whatever felt best to you, whatever felt best in your body and mind. Yoga is an awesome practice. In itself, it helps us de-stress. It helps us bring that parasympathetic system back into balance with our nervous system, with our anxiety, our stress, it helps balances that out. But even more so when we take time to do more restorative poses like you did today. We'll seal that practice in together with one final ohm. Take a big inhale. moment to think of one thing in your life that you truly are grateful for. Then holding on to that image in your mind's eye as you raise your head with a smile. Thank you for taking time for yourself today. Thank you for joining me. Drink lots of water, eat your veggies, and wear some sunblock. We'll see you next time. Namaste.